Hey babe, I'm back from the store. You will never believe how busy they were. Oh my god, it was like trying to find an army just to get the bare minimum. Oh, hey. God, you're looking worse. You, uh, getting any better? Here, let me feel your forehead. Oh god, you're burning up. Is everything alright? Like, how long have you been feeling like this? Well, why didn't you tell me you were feeling this bad? Oh, babe, you're never going to waste my time. Don't ever say that. I'm your partner. I'm here for you. You aren't a burden or anything at all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to the medicine cabinet. I'm going to grab some stuff for you, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I've got you uh, some of this, and this, and, uh, yeah, some of these. You'll definitely need some of these. Listen, it was no sweat. I don't mind pampering you while you're sick as a dog. Well, I don't think giving you pills is pampering, but still. <laughs> Are you, uh, hungry? Thirsty? Okay, well, I'm going to go to the kitchen, I'll grab you some ice water, and heat you up some soup. I think we still have, like, a handful of different canned soups in the pantry, and some of the homemade stuff I made last week in the freezer. Do you know what kind of soup you want? Okay, well, I'll go heat that stuff up for you, and I'll be right back. Again. <laughs> Soup's on. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Alright, come here. Let me feel that face. Yeah, you still feel really warm. Want me to take your temperature? Alright, I uh, grabbed the thermometer when I got the meds earlier. Here, let me just... Okay, got it turned on. Uh, just open your mouth and put this under your tongue for me real quick. And now we wait a few seconds for it to... Okay, there it is. Babe. Babe, let go. Babe, you're biting too hard. Oh my god, you've become so vicious. What has overtaken you? Is it the rabies? <laughs> okay, seriously. Let me see those numbers. Alright. Ew. Yeah. Damn. Okay, well, I knew you were hot, but this is concerning. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not too bad, but it's a mild fever. So, just make sure to stay hydrated and relax for me, okay? You want me to stay here with you? Of course I don't mind. I just, I don't want to keep you awake. You look exhausted and some rest could really do you good. Okay, okay, fine, I'll stay. We can do something until you eventually pass out. Alright, what do you want to do? Maybe we could play some video games, we could do a puzzle, watch a movie... Or I could read you a story. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll read you a story. It sounds fun. Gotta warn you, though, I can't read past a fourth grade level. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop joking. Alright, let me go grab a book from the shelf, and uh, you just get under those extra blankets and make yourself cozy. How about Cinderella? <laughs> awesome. I haven't read to anyone since we babysitted your friend's kid last year. Now I get to read to a big, sick baby all over again. <laughs> you know I'm just messing with you. Okay, comfortable? Alright, then let's get started. <clears throat> Cinderella Once there lived a kind and gentle soul whose name was Cinderella. Unfortunately, her mother died when she was very young. Not too long after her mother's passing, her father married again. His second wife had a sharp temper 
a wicked heart, and her two daughters were just like her. In a word, horrid. The sisters loved to order Cinderella around the house. They began to treat her like any other maid, instead of their own sister. The first said, Cinders, it's your job to clean the fireplace. That's why you're called Cinders. Get it? Before she had even finished sweeping the hearth, with soot on her face and dust on her skirt, the second sister griped, Cinders, don't dawdle. Light up the fire and make me a hot bath with sweet-smelling candles. And as she was heating the bath up, the stepmother said, Cinders, why haven't you been to the market yet? We're almost out of bread and cheese. We have no time for you to be lazy, you ungrateful girl. I don't know why she's British, but <laughs> just go with it. All day long, Cinderella swept, scrubbed, cooked, fetched, and carried. In winter, the ladies of the house, all except Cinderella, were invited to the royal ball, hosted by the prince. For a whole month, they tried on taffeta ball gowns, frilly petticoats, and strappy shoes. It was Cinderella, of course, who helped them in and out of their rich costumes, and who pressed and folded everything. Her own clothes were practically rags. Well, they weren't practically, they were rags. You're right, you're right, I'll keep going. The big night came, and Cinderella was left at home, sitting alone by the fireplace. A mouse came up to her and said, Dear, dear, don't fret. A fairy is outside, and she says that you shall go to the ball. Cinderella, confused that a rat was speaking, heeded what the rat had said and followed him out to the courtyard, where indeed a kind fairy was sitting. With a swish and flick of her magic wand, the fairy had transformed everything for Cinderella from glum to gold. A carriage was fashioned out of a simple pumpkin she had been made to grow by her wicked sisters. Her dress that had been dirtied from running to and from the market for her cruel stepmother was elevated into a gown of the finest silks and adorned with the rarest crystals and gems. And her shoes that had been worn down from climbing the staircase to the attic she had been made to sleep in were cobbled to be as new and turned into shoes from leather and strings to glass and silver, which honestly sounds so painful. After bestowing Cinderella with gifts befitting a queen, she promptly told the young girl, Be sure to leave the ball before the clock strikes midnight. Yes, I'm doing a British accent again. Fight me. Be sure to leave the ball before the clock strikes midnight, or you will be more embarrassed than you have ever been in your life. Oh my god, this is written kind of mean. Okay, well, after the long journey, she finally arrived at the castle ground in her magical coach and shimmering garment. When she entered the ballroom, all eyes were upon her, including those of her sisters, who did not recognize her. When the prince laid eyes on the beautiful new guest, his heart sang, and he asked this glamorous stranger to dance, not once, but all throughout the night. Before the evening was out, he had fallen in love with the mysterious young beauty. He was about to ask for her hand in marriage when the clock began to strike twelve. Honestly, the clock probably saved her. Oh, you must excuse me frantically exclaimed Cinderella as she began to run for the door. When she was dashing down the steps, one of her enchanted glass slippers fell from her foot and she had to hop to the coach. In the morning, the prince found the lost slipper and ordered his servants to take it around the entire kingdom until they discover the foot that exactly fit it. When the prince's servants came to the house where Cinderella lived, her rude sisters were eager to try on the slipper. It fits me perfectly said the first, but she could not shove her heels inside. You can call me your royal highness because my foot fits better, said the second, but it was clear that her foot was even bigger and less able to slip into the slipper. The royal servant looked up and saw Cinderella sitting by the fireplace that she had been cleaning. There was a bit of soot on her nose and it made her face all the more charming. That's kind of weird. He said, would you care to try on the shoe, miss? Why bother with her? She's just the maid," said the wicked stepsister's mother. "I know. I don't. I can't do a British accent, but I'm trying." "I would like to try, thank you," meekly said Cinderella. Her foot slipped in perfectly. "Who would have thought our quest is finally complete?" declared the royal servant. "What?" exclaimed the stepmother. "You've got to be kidding me!" "You idiot! You've got the wrong girl," protested the stepsisters but the servant was already calling for the coachman to take Cinderella to the palace, dressed in her rags exactly as she was, 
and wearing her normal shoe on one foot and her dancing slipper on the other. As Cinderella left the house, the stepmother cried out, Good riddance, we've had enough of your cheek. But Cinderella knew that she had found true love, and the very next day she and the prince were wed, and the bells rang out all over the land. The end. <laughs> You're about to fall asleep, aren't you? Good night. Love you. Hope you feel better.